so you're thinking about moving to Barrie, Ontario. Maybe you've heard or read that Barrie is a great place to live in. It's safe, housing is more affordable than GTA, and it has a beautiful waterfront. If you've just heard or read these things, maybe you've driven through the city and are wondering, what is Barrie truly like? Is it really safe? What's the lifestyle like? In this video, we're gonna go over seven things you must know before moving to Barrie, Ontario. We're gonna talk about the areas of Barrie, where to live, where to avoid, go through the neighborhoods, and one of these seven points will most definitely save you money and it's not related to cheaper housing prices. I've been in Barrie, Ontario for over a decade and have been helping clients buy and sell in Barrie and the surrounding area for the last five plus years. By the end of this video, you'll know and be able to decide whether or not Barrie is the right fit for you. Starting off, know your areas in Barrie. We're gonna briefly go through all the neighborhoods in Barrie in just a second here, but Barrie has three main distinct areas. So when you're talking to locals and they say, oh, I live in North Barrie or I live in South Barrie, you gotta know what they're talking about. Barrie is divided into North and South by Tiffin Street and the Dunlop Street exit. Anything upwards of this line is considered North Barrie. This area here is called the East End. Anything down this line is South Barrie. And this area here is downtown, which is combined with the lakefront area. North Barrie has the Royal Victoria Hospital, Georgian College, Georgian Mall, Barrie Country Golf Club, 23 schools excluding the college, and about 40 parks. I say around 40 parks because they vary in sizes. Some are small green spaces and others are large parks. But there is a large amount of green spaces in the East End, which is where I'm at right now. I'm currently at Nelson Lookout, which is this lookout that gives you this beautiful view over Lake Simcoe, over Kempfelt Bay, over the water. You have these steps that go down to Nelson Square Park and connect to the Barrie Waterfront Trail, which is kilometers and kilometers of trail that goes all around Barrie to the, the downtown core, pass over to the other side and back around. So if you decide to live in the East End, this is a great little benefit to have, to have these little green spaces that you can visit by yourself, with friends or family, with your pets or anything that you choose to do in between. It's a great benefit to have. South Barrie has the only Costco in the city of Barrie. You have Park Place Commercial Shopping Center, the Barrie Molson Center, now called the Paul Sadlin Arena, 19 schools and around 30 parks. Downtown Barrie, the good and the bad. Downtown Barrie is really nice, but it is small. Now, during the summer times, they have open air Dunlop, so they close off this entire street here. You can walk around. Vendors come out onto the streets. The, 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 the patios get extended. It's a beautiful place. During the summertime, there's a ton of events and activities that happen here. You have Kempet Fest, which is a huge, huge festival in the summertime. So in the wintertime, there's Winter Fest. They have uh, the Barrie Santa Claus Parade. Comes all around Lakeshore Drive and stops right over here. They sometimes showcase movies here at Meridian Place. Overall, it's a great area. The downside is that it is kind of small. It's only barely two blocks, uh, two blocks long. And the bad of Barry is that, like any downtown, you're gonna have certain things that are concentrated in the downtown core of the city, which in this case would be, unfortunately, homelessness and uh, some open drug use, which I've seen time and time again. But uh, like any city that's gonna have that, Barry is overall safer than other cities when it comes down to it but since we have a more smaller downtown it's much more concentrated towards that core overall it's an amazing area but definitely stick towards downtown Barrie in the daytime as opposed to the evening time because that's kind of when potentially might be a place that you don't want to be in too often moving on to Barrie neighborhoods Depending on when you're watching this, we are either going to be doing in-depth neighborhood tours for every single neighborhood in Barrie or have done them already. Either way, make sure to subscribe and check out the channel for more information on Barrie neighborhoods. But here's an overview. These are the primary neighborhoods labeled by the city of Barrie starting at BA01 and moving through to BA12. You have the East End, North Barrie, City Center, Sunnydale, West, Lakeshore, Arda, Allendale, Painswick, Inishore, Holly and BA12 South. And within these primary neighborhoods, there are also sub neighborhoods and communities like Grove East, North Shore, Letitia Heights, 400 West and East, South Shore, Rural Barry Southeast, and more. Before we jump into the next detail here, if you are thinking of moving to the city of Barrie or relocating within the city of Barrie into the surrounding areas and you have any questions or concerns about making that move, then don't hesitate to reach out. Shoot us a call, text, email, or Instagram DM. Whether you're looking to move in nine days, nine weeks, or nine months, we're here to answer any questions you may have and help you make a smooth move to the city of Barrie or the surrounding areas. All our contact information is in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. Activities, events, and lifestyle. Barrie has so many amazing outdoor activities and events throughout the year, but it is lacking on one aspect. Now, for example, right now, I'm on one of Barrie's many array of trails that are either within the city 
or the immediate surrounding area that you can come here alone, you can come here with friends or family, or you can take your dogs or pet on a walk. But one thing that Barrie is lacking in, it is lacking in the nightlife, if that is part of your lifestyle that you would like to incorporate. We have a grand total of about two and a half clubs. We have the Alley Club, which is an electronic dance music club with a younger demographic, I would say. You have the Ranch, which is a pretty large country club, which has more of a very demographic. And you have the Queens, which is a bar that kind of turns into a nightclub after 10 p.m. And then we also got a recent addition of the Accent Lounge, which is a bar or a slash club, but it's only open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if nightlife is something that you're really into and really looking for, Barry might not have it, but in between or anything in addition to that, Barry pretty much has it all. And that ties into safety. Barrie is overall a really safe city. I made a previous video where I talked about the two most safest neighborhoods and two most dangerous areas in the city of Barrie, which you can check out where we go a little more in depth on these areas. But as a summary and briefly, I'd say this. Before buying and moving in these areas here, take a good look around and do your due diligence on the immediate community and neighborhood, as these are areas where there's a high reported amount of crime compared to other neighborhoods in Barrie. The safest areas in Barrie are in the South End. And that brings us to the detail or must know thing about Barry that will save you money. Barry's automated speed cameras. Barry's implementing an auto speed enforcement program where they're placing around 30 cameras or so automated speed cameras around the city. And I got caught on one and I had to pay $85. Now, before you say anything about me getting ticketed or the fact that after hearing this, you might say, you know what, this is ridiculous. I am no longer thinking of moving to the city of Barry after hearing this. Here's what I have to say. I do support this program because these automated or Auto speed enforcement programs are going into community safety zones, such as schools, parks, where I'm at now, and different areas that they, the city's gonna value as community, community zones that need enforced safety. Because I will tell you personally, the amount of times that I've been at a park or a school area or driven nearby, or even just walking, and there are kids playing some type of sport and cars are just flying by way too quickly. And it's just a couple meters away where these kids are playing sports. That's a danger. And especially if you're a family or considering starting a family after you move into the city of Barrie, this is actually something that is a big benefit to enforce the speed limit, to get cars to slow down around these areas where there might be kids and families present. Now, in terms of why I got ticketed, I think it was a little unfair, but I paid the ticket and kind of learned my lesson anyways. But again, I do support this program and I think it is for the better to enforce the speed limit around areas such as schools and parks and where families might be uh, looking to move into or looking to spend a lot of time in. Uh, overall, it is for the better, but something that you should know is that definitely pay attention as to where you're driving and where these speed cameras are because this will definitely save you money. You don't be getting caught doing, you know, getting $85 tickets for nothing. The final aspect of what you must know if moving to the city of Barrie is transportation. You do need a car to get around the city of Barrie because the transportation system, the public transportation system is not as built up or developed as in other larger cities. We do have ride sharing programs like Uber and Lyft, but they also don't have, they're not as developed. They don't have as much drivers as in areas where and where more people live in like Mississauga, Vaughan and everything pretty much down south the city of Barrie. We have two GO stations, but both of them are in the south end. So you have a GO station in near downtown Barrie and then you have a go station in South Barrie. So if you're someone who needs to get to the city midday or you're someone who you know needs to go do their groceries around midday because you're working in the evenings or something in between, then you either have to have a car for transportation or be very specific about where you move into it because there are neighborhoods and pockets of areas where everything is walkable. You can walk to a rec center, you can walk to a school, you can walk to groceries, the gym, restaurants, everything but those are pretty limited because in the majority of Barry, you do need to drive to get to where you need to go. So either be very specific or make sure that if for example, you are a family coming up from the GTA and you've only had one car because you've been able to make everything work with ride sharing apps and public transportation, definitely take the overall transportation and distance between areas in the city of Barry into a factor before moving here when deciding, hey, what's what's the best option here? Because if you only have one car, you might need to get another one if there's a few members in your family and everyone has to go to different places at different times because Barry, just at this point in time, does not have the public transportation system to sustain that. And those are the seven things you must know before moving to Barry, Ontario. Hopefully as promised, you understand and know a little more about the city so you can make the decision for yourself whether you think Barry, Ontario is the right fit for you, whether you think it's not. I'm just out here on the beautiful waterfront, which is obviously 
a main statement point for the city of Barrie. If you are thinking of moving here, again, don't hesitate to reach out. Our contact information is in the details down below, whether you're looking to move in nine days, nine weeks, or nine months. And make sure to check out this video here because you don't want to miss the information we talked about in it.